Hello there. I have just released my new Ruby on Rails 7 course on Udemy. Here we'll, we'll learn how to build Rails applications from the ground up. We'll build five applications. We'll start off with a simple blog application where we'll learn the fundamentals of Rails. We'll learn how to use the Rails generator, how to generate scaffolds and models and controllers and views. Then we'll move on to an appointment booking application. Here, we'll learn how to use additional gems such as device for authentication. And we'll also learn how to add simple CSS to our application. We'll also learn how to use relationships and associations between models here. And then for our third project, we will create a notebook application where users will be able to take notes. For this application, we'll also use Tailwind CSS and we'll also explore relationships and associations further. Then for our fourth application, we'll dive into Hotwire and we will refactor our notebook application and we'll use turbo streams and turbo frames to make dynamic changes to our application. This is one of the coolest features of Real 7 and I can't wait for you to explore it. And finally, for our last application, we'll also use Turbo Streams to create a chat application where users will be able to move to different rooms and have various chats with each other. So I'll link this course in the description below. Today, we will learn how to implement direct uploads in our Rails application. Rails provides us with easy configurations to make this possible. To begin, we first create our Rails application. Once we have created our application, we generate a scaffold. We'll create an article scaffold for this. So we do Rails generate scaffold article. And we say title of type string. And we run our migration. The next step would be to install active storage. And once we have done that, we also install the JavaScript using it imports maps. This will help us pin our, our JavaScript for active storage. And then we also need a few gems. We'll add the image processing gem. And we will also add our AWSDK. Then we run our final migrations for this. And we start our server. We can then update our routes. Like this. Look at it. We have a little title here. So next, we go to our model. It can do has one attached. And we say video. Then we go to our controller. And we do video. Next, we go to our form. Um, and then we add our file field for video. Our file field for video. Next, we want to configure active storage. And we also provide it provides us with several services where we can configure active storage. Here we have our tests, our local, 
and if we're using an external service like Amazon or Google or DigitalOcean, here's where we'll define our or set our service, our service, our access key, our all our credentials for our applications. So I'll go ahead and set up mine. Next, you want to tell our application to use our new configured storage service in development and in production. So we open our development.rb file, search for storage, and you can see it's set to local. We want it to be use Amazon. Same the same thing goes for our production. We set this to Amazon. Right. For this to take um, to take effect, we'll have to restart our server. We'll do that a little bit later. To implement direct uploads, we look at the documentation on the Ruby on Rails website. And we can see it tells us what to do. We first import active storage, which we copy here. We'll go to our application JS file and simply paste this in. And next, it tells us that we should add direct upload true to our, our, our field. So we do that. We go back to our form. And you can see we can add, we've added direct upload true. The very next step is to add our JavaScript for this. We already provided with the JavaScript and everything that we need to make our direct uploads work. So we could go ahead and copy this, go directly into our application.js file again. We can simply paste it in. And then finally, we copy our CSS and we go back. This so would make and go to our application CSS file. This would make uh, it prettier. You know, we start our server. Once we have restarted our server, we can test it out a bit. You can click on this and you can click on create article. And you can see the CSS and everything works, but as this give as this there's a red outline here showing us an error. And this is because we have not set up our calls for our calls on our digital ocean space. Digital Ocean Spaces doesn't directly allow us to use local hosts here. So to do that, to connect to our to connect here, we use NG Rock. NG Rock provides real-time UI web UI where you can introspect all HTML traffic. So it allows us to it allows us to present our laptop port. It exposes our local server ports to the internet. So to do that, we go over to this website, the official website. We sign up and we download, and we download a free copy of it. This doesn't take long at all. You can simply follow the documentation to do this on the website. Once you have it installed, if I already do, you simply run ng-rock http and then so at the port you want to expose and does that straight away for you since port 3000 is what we're using for our rails application you can simply connect to it so you can see if we open it up it'll be presented with an error and to allow request to this url make sure it's a valid host name so to do this we simply copy this and we go to our we go to development here we add a new host we can then restart our server let's try again 
there we go. So with this URL here, we can go back to our digital ocean space. Go back to our digital ocean space. And we can paste this right here. So we can look at the course that we need the course specification here. We need an origin, we need a content type, we need content MD and content disposition. So go ahead and do that you can just go ahead and do this at this 3000 and we can begin to add our headers origin content type and this last one And of course, we're using a put method for this. So we go ahead and click on save. With that, let's go ahead and test this out. So let's give it title of post videos. Let's create this GIF. Let's click on create. Let's try it out. Click on this, click on create. And there we go, it's uploaded directly. We can try it again. It's working. You can see everything. You can see the logs on the database. Everything was successful. So that is that for direct uploads. Is an active storage and NG rock.